and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and to everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Selesnia Nights. That's right, we're going to try it here without Once Upon a Time. As you know, Once Upon a Time was banned yesterday, uh, so there's there's none, no more of that instant, which this deck really relied on. Um, or by relied on, I mean it was, it was definitely a big part of it. Um, so I'm changing up a couple of things. So instead of having those four Once Upon a Times, what we're going to do is... I, I need one more mana source. There's only 24 lands in the deck. Um, so we're playing a Flower Flourish as basically just a 25th land. It can also kind of help fix the mana, uh, whether we need green or white, you know, whatever, if we're trying to cast stuff like Conclave Cavalier, Tulsa Murray, like these, some of these cards can be hard to cast. So the Flower Flourish is basically our 25th land that also just has upside with the Flourish ability. Um, if if we go wide with you know Worthy Knight and Tristani and things like that, and, and we want to cast Flourish, so that's one of the Once Upon a Times. Um, another one is I'm going to get just another Knight in here with Sir Farin. Um, you know, so just get one extra creature in here. It's you know it's a Knight you can hit off a claimed contender. I think the big thing that I like about Sir Farin um, is that it's a card that you can play immediately after you play the Great Henge. I like that quite a bit, being able to drop the Great Henge add gg to your mana pool and then drop sir farin immediately um and plus sir farin can you know just like pump up your questing beast whenever if you attack with both of them or your conclave tribunal or you know any other creature that you want to attack with also um we have a lot of ways to pump up the powers of our creatures um as well with like tristani giving our creatures plus one plus one circle of loyalty giving our creatures plus one plus one so maybe you can have a bigger sir farin also and, and have it have even more of an impact there and of course, the the Great Henge giving plus one plus one counters as well. Um, and then for the other two, once upon a times, I added in a little bit of removal because you know we didn't really have removal before. So we got one Prison Realm, one Conclave Tribunal. I couldn't really decide which one I wanted to play. You know, Prison Realm always costs three mana, which is nice. You get the Scry, which is nice, um, but it only hits Planeswalkers and creatures. Conclave Tribunal gets any non-land permanent, so you can get you know like a Witch's Oven or any non-land permanent that you want. But sometimes it costs four. You know, you can convoke it. Tribunal is really going to be better if we're making a bunch of knights with Worthy Knight, or a bunch of humans with Worthy Knight to give us, like, some ability to uh, convoke it in there. But other times it's just going to cost four if we don't have the things to convoke, and so that's worse also. So I wasn't really sure which one to play, so we're just going to play one of each. Um, before we were playing this, I was also just playing to the Great Henge, um, but there's more aggro in the format, more control in the format right now. That's that's what we're kind of seeing: more aggro and control and less mid range with the with the bannings at this point in time. And I I like the Great Henge in both of those matchups. You know, against aggro, you're gaining that life, the two life every single turn, and against control, you get to draw a lot more cards. So we're I'm getting a third the Great Henge in here and going down to two Circle of Loyalty. I think I had like three three circles and two Great Henges before. Um, also talked about maybe adding in two Cavalier of Dawns um, with taking out a circle there, actually. And so I'm not going to play the second Cavalier. We'll only play one Cavalier and get a Great Henjin over here. Um, but we still got a couple Cavalier of Dawns over here in the sideboard as well. Got Shifting Ceratops to help out against Control. Um, another new thing that I'm going to try here is I'm going to try an Ajani the Great Hearted against these Cauldron Familiar decks. They're trying to ping you out. Because you can just drop this and start gaining three life every single turn. So I'm going to see how this, another just constant source of life gain. And then, uh, of course, the minus ability uh, can pump up a whole bunch of things and be very good, too. So I'm just going to have one. You know, it's not something that I want to draw a lot of, just having one. Um, and then Tulsmer, another card there uh, against the small creature decks. I may need a little bit more against control in the sideboard, honestly. We'll kind of see how it goes. But we're going to play... Four matches over in ranked. And we'll get to it because I'm going to try to fit in um, this and the Abzan hero for today. Okay. Yeah, Abzan. Yeah, I'm excited about the Abzan hero too. I basically, I really like um, Knight of Autumn right now. I think Knight of Autumn is just a really powerful card right now. And so. That's something that both Selesnya and Abzan have access to. Um, that I'm, I'm something that makes me excited about these decks. Hmm. I think we just mulligan. It's tough having three land and four spells and mulliganing. But these are 
not very good three or four spells. Yeah, yeah, artifacts and enchantments are everywhere. And so I think Knight of Autumn. So being able to play just four main deck Knight of Autumn is pretty awesome. All right, good looking hand here. I don't really know what I want to put back. I guess it could be a Paradise Druid or a land. I'm definitely keeping the other two. Um, I guess I need to hit land drops. But I, I really want the two Paradise Druids to help ramp into this Great Henge, though, too. Well, it's unfortunate for them that they mold the five, but also they have turn one edge wall innkeeper, so they're going to be able to make up those cards just fine. That's good. So you get a little removal in your life. What can go wrong? <laughs> no. I need Conclave Tribunal. <laughs> Alright, well I guess Conclave Tribunal is the better card. Confirmed. <laughs> Prison Realm Unplayable. All right, hoping I draw a land so I can play the Great Henge and Acclaimed Contender. Pain is weakness, leaving the body. Come on, land. Not land, but Worthy Knight. Hmm. So do I just get the Great Henge in play? Yes. That is what I do. All right, Hawkeye's kind of the way. What, what would you think about an event every two weeks or so? <laughs> okay, why well, did it to sit right there? Um, oh, there I can just scroll down. All right, what would you think about an event every two weeks or so that lasts for a few days and allows players to play any card in standard so people can test decks before fully investing into them? Um, that's. I guess if you had if you had like a you'd have to have a, a pretty decent entry fee to that. That's something that I don't think wizards would necessarily want because they just want people to invest. You know, they just want they want you just to buy cards, kind of thing. Um, so I, I don't think that's necessarily something that that they would. Like too much. From time to time. All right, we should be able to draw a lot of cards here. Hopefully.
Um, I mean, I guess maybe that's true that maybe people would be more willing to invest money if they knew that they liked the decks that they'd be playing, but they may also just want to just wait. They may just be more willing just to wait until the next time one of those events happen and 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 then, you know, play more magic then during that event. I'm not sure. Good. I grow bored with this fight. Um... But I don't think that necessarily it would just be people would spend more money because of that event, honestly. I'm not sure if it's, you know, that cut and dry, so, that, so it kind of makes sense for them not to do it. The... Okay, that's good. Ideally, that's how the it would work out, but it, life doesn't always work out ideally. Ooh, I kind of want another acclaimed contender because we get to draw another card. Yeah, circle of loyalty is good, but Claim contender can just hit another circle of loyalty. I mean, I, I tap the summoning set creatures. I've suffered worse. The Great Hinge is awesome. Boo. Masker Girl, not awesome. They're lucky. They're lucky. I still have millions of cards over here. Sacrifice. That's a good one. Come on, come on, computer, you can do it. This deck is sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's like so insane when it gets going. Uh, all right, just go over the top. That's what we're doing, Hawkeye. Okay. Over the tab. 
All right, so Prison Realm and Conclave Tribunal. Just kind of exile stuff. Maybe we just get Devout Decree instead. That also just kind of exiles the thing that we we're going to exile anyway. Get this extra Tulsimer in here to fight um, Edgewall Innkeeper. I mean, let's take out the Farron. No, no March of the Multitudes. I'm just kind of focused on the Great Henge. And doing crazy stuff with it. Knight of Autumn isn't as strong, but we do need to have a lot of knights for a claimed contender. Get another 5 drop in here. Cavalier of Dawn. Maybe not. All right, here we go. Uh, Sir Farron's in the main deck. It's just a knight. It's just like that one extra knight to help out our knight stuff in the main deck. It's gonna be the card that we're gonna sideboard out, like every time. It's it's just a good it's a good, you know, extra knight for all of our knight synergy stuff game one, and then we'll side it out for our sideboard cards every single every single match. Um, yeah, I mean, glass, exiling Innkeeper with Glass Casket would be nice, but as we saw there, they could use, like, Ogari Queen to, to kill the Glass Casket. In, innkeeper could be a card that's going to be, that could be me. I just don't, I have answers to it in my sideboard, but I don't really want to play those answers. So that's kind of the conundrum. I like my opponent just not drawing Innkeeper more. Hmm. Hey, Mazda. Sure. So I think I should drop Cavalier before dropping Questing Beast. If they're that willing to just fire off a Noxious Grasp, I feel like they have another Noxious Grasp. And I dealt with them to Noxious Grasp with the Beast. That's why we're going to just drop Cavalier. But it's a very hasty removal spell. You won't see the end coming until it's too it was probably going to die anyway. So my thinking here is that one, like maybe they don't have another never mind they do. I was like, maybe they don't have another one one for Love Struck Beast. Um They did. Everyone is expendable.
I won't forgive this. That's what I'm talking about right there. Now that's a good quality magic card right here. Five cards in hand is so many cards. Sure hope they don't have anything that kills the Greyhenge. Have something that killed the Greyhenge. Yeah, I, I really like Night, Night of Autumn right now in this format. So I really want to play. Or which I think these green white decks are in a in a good spot. So I don't have that life gain turn after turn anymore. So rude. So I was thinking that maybe they have like, you know, like Murderous Rider. Um, and I didn't want them to, yeah, say like, or like Noxious Grass like that. I wanted them to kill the Cavalier and not kill Questing Beast. So that's why I led with the uh, Anthem effect there. Instead of leading with Questing Beast. Now return to nature, OP.
Hmm. So much removal. Does it grasp, grasp, nature, nature, legion's end, rider, rider. So much removal. So the real question is whether or not Tristani is going to be able to survive. You know, like I'd be, it'd be nice to be able to attack with the three twos, but their deck is just filled with removal. <laughs> and another one. If I were you, I'd just <laughs> rise and shine. <laughs> Smelly, but effective. Hmm. I'm so dead. I've learned much from your death. Why can't I play Veil of Summer? Okay, so we didn't get to really take advantage of the Great Henge that time. We didn't have a claimed contender to draw us a bunch of cards. It's not as good for us. Let's see if we can do more of that stuff this next game. I don't love this hand, but I don't really want to go to five. Um, we need to hit lots of land drops. Uh, Flower obviously gets a, a land out of our deck, so we, we have a three land hand here. But I'm not going to just cast it right away because I want to draw lands. Jeez. So it's just a it's it's a slightly higher percentage chance to draw a land if I don't cast it because you know there's there's still that extra land in my deck, and also that uh, we also know that our bottom card is is a cavalier. So if I if I do cast it, then we have a little bit less chance. All right, but now, now we drew our third land, which is perfect. So now I'm going to grab it, so we know we have four lands, so we can play Conclave Cavalier next turn. Because then, if we if we get Conclave Cavalier out there, then the Great Henge will cost five mana. So maybe we can curve Cavalier into the Great Henge if we would draw a land this turn or next turn this turn of course we just draw a the great henge so that's not going to help us cast that why do you have to have innkeeper every game i don't have like worthy knight or acclaimed contender at all i'm playing four of those why do you have to have innkeeper every game So 
we would have drawn the land. We would have been able to play the Great Henge if they didn't. Noxious Grasp. Gosh, their hand's awesome. I'm jealous. Please don't have Return to Nature also. Have everything else. Please don't have that card too. I'm not sure why they wouldn't attack with Cavalier. Or sorry, with Bloodstruck Beast. I'm happy they didn't, but I don't know why they wouldn't. Wow, discard Garrick. Hmm. So that unfortunately I took out all my knights, so I don't get the acclaimed contender trigger. That acclaimed contender trigger. Oh, I was getting bored anyway. I guess that's true, they're just gonna make me sack it anyway. So I should have blocked. That was a very good turn for me. Keeping the Blossoming Sands in hand to discard Tarankle. Now, I I kept it because I thought that maybe I need to like play it to be able to gain life. I kept it over the Great Henge. Sacrifice. 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 No sacrifice. And no discard, but still kept the card in hand. It's got to be a removal spell. Not removal? Was it Liliana? It's gotta be Liliana. No, maybe it was removal. <laughs> uh 
Oh, the Great Hen just so good. Don't see why Veil of Summer is banned. Basically just because being able to counter a spell and draw a card, it's basically it does too much and it's too efficient and for too little of a cost at one mana. Um, and it's just, it's completely game changing for one mana, the the tempo that and it replaces itself. It's just such a great card. Wow. All right, time to go crazy. They're looking for Masker Girl over there. Tapping in summoning sick ones. Yeah, this deck is sweet when it gets going, gets untapped with the Great Henge. Acclaimed contender, finding your circle of loyalty in the Great Henge. All right, want to know? Selesnia Knights. <laughs> I would say that we're off to the races, but I think we just bought the track. <laughs> yeah, that's some good old Selesnia action. Good old Selesny action right there. Yeah, the, the Great Henge is just certainly one of my favorite cards. Um, you know, draws you cards, gains you life, adds mana, and rewards you for playing creatures. That's just like all in my wheelhouse. So yeah, definitely really like the Great Henge. And this is a very good The Great Hench deck. Alright, time to go wide. Please no Flame Slash or Flame Sweep. Don't have that. Is this a cast trigger? Cool, it's a cast trigger. So do I even tribunal this or do I tribunal... Do I tribunal more a bigger blocker next turn? We'll tribunal this. It means that if they have Omnath, they don't get to kill a worthy knight. Um, but, you know, they could have like Cavalier of Thorns that maybe we want to tribunal instead. But I don't know. I like, I like doing that. Like, we're just going to tap out Tristani, swing. Yeah, don't kill my worthy knight. Okay, tried the Abzan Wolves tonight, had some success. Good. Hmm. That's unfortunate they got a second blocker.
they didn't have that second blocker, they would have been dead. But it looks like they're dead anyway. Hand was pretty good. All right. So let's see. Temer Elementals. So I think against Temer, I want some more exile removal. Don't know if I want all three glass caskets. Gets rid of Risen Reef, that's like kind of a boot it. I don't think Tulsimers is good. It again kind of kills Risen Reef, and that's about it. All right, let's give this a try. I yeah, I'm surprised I haven't seen as much Simic Flash. Uh, I thought that we'd we'd be seeing more Simic Flash for sure. Um, but yeah, I haven't I haven't really played against Simic Flash since uh, in the last two days since the changes, and I've been pretty surprised at that. Maybe I need to play some Simic Flash. Would you play the Henge also in Adventure Selesnia, even if it doesn't have a contender? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, I guess Adventure Selesnia, so that... Maybe sideboard for that deck. That deck's not going to be playing as as big of creatures when you have like Venerated Luxodon. You can't turn it on as much. Like that that deck's really about playing a whole lot of really small creatures and going wide and like tokens and things like that. Man, the Great Henge is just awesome though. Like even there's even think of like just like those one mana creatures having the Great Henge for those. Still pretty awesome. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna play just you know, just play Tristani here, and then it. And then the Great Henge costs... If I play Tristani here, then the Great Henge would only cost 4 the next turn, because this would be a 5-5. Five five, and then I'd be able to play Great Henge plus Slam Contender also next turn. But you can't really go wrong just getting the Great Henge in play. There we go. GG's. We're about to go crazy again. We're up to number 84. Okay, 2 0 Celestia Knights here. Definitely a really good day in Mythic here. You know, like overall on the day, what are we? We're four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, and two on the day. Very good. <laughs> yeah. 
The Great Henge makes everything better. Everything hinges on the henge. Okay, crafted this deck now. You just needed the one henge. That's not bad. So yeah, give it a try. Let me know how it goes. And of course, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're you know, playing all these decks, I always like hearing in the comments how you're doing with the decks. <laughs> See, can this be once a like these these were Prison Realm and Sir Farron were once upon a times. Like this hand with, with two once upon a times, it'd be it'd be perfect. It'd be a snap keep. The snappiest keep. I kinda like having the extra white sources because Great Henge adds double double G. Yeah, I, I sure do. Just, uh, exclamation point playlist. That's my stream playlist that I put together. And if you ever have suggestions for music for the stream playlist, for those y'all, you know, like y'all, uh, you know, hear the type of songs that are on the playlist and everything. So if you have, you know, anything that I'm missing, you got suggestions in the Discord channel, which if you're not, Discord channel's for everybody. If you're not a member of the Discord channel anyway, you should be. But um, the Discord channel has tons of different rooms. It's basically like a huge chat room kind of thing. Uh, tons of different rooms with stuff, and one of them is mu music requests. So, you know, feel free to put song, song requests in there for, for me to add to the stream. Uh, let's see. And then, you know, I'll, uh, they need a Spotify link, though, because you don't have a Spotify playlist, so... The song has to be on Spotify. But yeah, just, just post the Spotify link in there and I'll listen to it. If I like it, I'll put it in the playlist. I don't like counter spells. I don't like counter spells. Oh, yeah. Yeah, our first play not being until turn four is not good enough. That that first hand would have been awesome if we had two Once Upon a Times. <laughs> yeah, I know. Where's, where's my Veil of Summers? Oh, they tapped out. <laughs> I just want to play my Great Henges and play all my creatures and play my stuff. It's so much fun. Not getting all my spells countered. It's not fun. This isn't taken for good because of Brazen Borrower. So like, Conclave Tribunal is not spectacular here because of Brazen Borrower.
Uh, yeah, Veil of Summer would have been perfectly fine at two mana, like everything else in that cycle was two mana, and if it didn't say draw a card, it would have been perfectly fine, you know, like Aether Gust and all the other stuff. If it just had, you know, like, you know, Scry 1, like uh, Devout Decree kind of thing. If it just cost two mana, it'd still be a very good card, and they wouldn't have to ban it, and it wouldn't have been ridiculously overpowered and ban worthy. You know, the whole the rest of the cycle costs two. Noxious Grasp, Ether Gust, Devout Decree, and Fry. But they make one of the cards cost one, and then that's the only one that also draws a card. Just kinda silly. Yeah, Autumn's Veil is definitely a fair card. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Playing Fry doesn't cost two. It costs you a match, considering it doesn't actually hit anything you want it to kill. And so that's what I was talking about with Tribunal getting bounced. Fortunately, they found a Brazen Borrower. That's honestly not a very good use of an explosion. Explosion could draw like so many cards. That was really not a good use of an explosion. I'm I'm perfectly content with them essentially just wasting an explosion there. That was a, a pretty bad use of explosion. They killed two three threes with it, but instead they could have killed one of the three threes and drawn a ton of cards. Yeah, Autumn's Veil didn't see very much play at all. Um, what are they doing? They copy this to, to draw two cards? They can just draw five cards. Do they not know what Explosion does? They would have just played Explosion, they would have drawn six cards. What are they doing? Drawing, wasting this card to, to be a draw two? This card's so much more valuable than a draw two. It's twice. They just wasted the best card in their deck for just very marginal use. They turned them into three mana spells. They turned them into Divination and Flame Sweep. Turned a card that said, you know, like one one time it said draw six, the other time it said, you know, draw more than that because they had reclamation in play. And they said, no, we'll just turn it into a three mana spell instead. That's cool. Oh yeah, they definitely have just have to have like more explosions since they're just wasting these, but. <laughs> yeah, these are pretty mediocre hinges. I'm not so sure about them being that great. That's how you're supposed to use that card. Good job.
Certainly seems like I need more of a sideboard plan for this matchup. I don't know, maybe not. We got four Knight of Autumns, Cavalier of Dawns to blow those up. I need to take out something, you know, four that's four plus mana. I'll just get rid of that Conclave Tribunal. <laughs> they say it's the Great Wall of China, but it's not. It's the OK Wall of China. Yeah, I, I just had some OK henges. That hurts putting my favorite card back. It's either this or Conclave Trap or Conclave Cavalier. I'm just gonna put that back. Land. Yuck. Come on, twenty five land deck. Yay. Hmm. Thanks, Matthew. Yeah, great, great record today. Um, looks like this is... I'd be surprised if we win this match. You know, it's not... Match isn't over or anything, but I'd be surprised if we win this one. Could really use land there. Not another five drop. They get to just in chemistry's insight now. So jealous. Just turn two growth spiral, turn three chemistry's insight. Just the best. I got turn three, 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 turn four. I can't play any spells. Yeah, Johnny Stefani. Thanks for that tier one sub. Getting that hype in there. Ah. Our 12th sub of the day. Looks like I was one behind. So they kind of need double flame sweep. I mean, they could just have a couple of lava coils and stuff, though, too. Go shifting ceratops. Go dinos, go dinos, go dinos. Okay, shifting ceratops, doing doing some work.
<laughs> Dino Knight. Dino Knight. That's a great sign. What's up, Tariq? Thanks that Twitch Prime sub. All right, well, good job, Shifting Ceratops. Way to just completely win the game on your own. I'm sure they have a lot of counter magic. Conclave Cavalier is definitely a lot better than Sir Farron. <laughs> Anna Tran with the cheers. Thanks, Anna Tran. Um, I'm, I'm going to play the Sir Farron, though, especially on the draw. We're going to be a little slower. You know, I, basically, I want to I trim the curve just a little bit. My curve is just really high right now. <clears throat> and so doing that to just trim the curve a little bit. All right, we got turn. Oh, man, why are we... <laughs> Why do we have to draw all this top end stuff, though? We got potentially turn three Ceratops, which is why I kept it. Gosh, my draw steps, though. Can we just draw land? Draw steps are horrible. If they have, I mean, if they have flame sweep, I die. Please don't. Please, us draw land. I don't like that scry to the top. Don't scry to the top. Should have been more specific on which land to draw. Wow, they are missing land drops. They got all spells over there, yet they still kept they kept something on top, yet they don't have lands. I'm doing this right now instead of just going to attacks, because if I go to attacks and then they flame sweep during combat, then I don't have the Paradise Druid mana anymore. So I'm casting that immediately. Yeah, I don't know. What did they... I mean, might, might have been Reclamation. I mean, there's the Flame Sweep. You know, like, what they keep on top? Yep. Ugh. These Blossoming Sands. I would have loved to just resolve Questing Beast there. I guess I should have just played this first. I guess we're going to play that. I was definitely kind of planning on playing Cavalier of Dawn. I should have just played this first. Because, yeah, like, that getting countered is, is just fine for Cavalier. If, if we do play Cavalier and then Cavalier dies, we get it back. But yeah, that would have been big to be able to play Questing Beast the previous turn. Double Ether Gust, Chandra. Hmm. I am. 
And no one is telling me what to do. Let's make some more room to fight in. At least those ether gusts are going to be gone now. Do you think my opponent sideboarded too much? Hey, at least I tried. Certainly seems like it. And if, if they do kill Cavalier of Dawn, we'll be able to just get back Circle of Loyalty. Oh, I guess I, I guess I didn't really even consider. I was just focused on the Cavalier and not playing the Questing Beast. I don't know. I guess I did, just didn't really consider just playing the Questing Beast to kill Chandra. Honestly, and yes, that would have been a better play. I don't. I don't know. I just didn't. I'm not sure why I didn't really consider it. Yeah, I should have done that. I'm going to have to be able to go wide here. I mean, obviously, we just have to worry about, like, they can just play Wilderness Reclamation at any point. And... Um, then play Explosion and kill me. That's why this is a tough matchup for us. Ooh, they didn't just play Bone Crusher Giant? Okay, so they wanted to keep the two mana up. Acclaim Contender is actually better than Questing Beast, which is kind of crazy. Rude. That hurts. There's a bunch of good cards we're going to be drawn into. Yeah, if I, if I destroy their 5-5 five, five with Cavalier... Um, you know, they still have two 3-3s three, to block with. They can, you know, still kind of team up if they want. I, I kind of like saving this Cavalier for a Wilderness Reclamation, honestly. Pretty likely that they have a counter spell here. I sure hope not. Please don't. They've already played so many counter spells. Please don't have any more. It resolved. It resolved. Well, that's good. 
Um. Oh no, it's definitely not bad. You want to play Burning Tree? I'm going to see Sarah the Great Henge. No, that sounds awesome. No, that sounds great. Just every chemistry is in sight. I'll be pretty surprised if we sur survive here, honestly. I, I, I think this just re results in us losing this turn. Like, they only have 19 cards left. Like how am I, how am I not dead? We haven't seen any reclamations or explosions yet. Like not a single one. Like they got to just have them all in hand, right? They can't just all be at the bottom of the library. So they got to just go like drop, drop rec reclamation, kill me, or not. Yeah, like, and they didn't just draw draw into Reclamation. They could have drawn another four cards. So yeah, I don't I don't know what's going on over here. And I have I have lethal attackers and they bounce my the Great Henge. Maybe they change decks to team or control. I mean, they. Yeah, maybe. I mean. Still surprised they haven't killed us yet. At least it's just one reclamation. So it's not lethal, it's just one reclamation.
Obviously, now I wish I would have grabbed Knight of Autumn instead of Cavalier. I was th I was thinking that maybe I could play the Cavalier before they do all the, the Flame Sweep stuff. But yeah, I, I completely regret not grabbing Knight of Autumn right now. They don't have cards left in their library. They have nine, and they've put they've put a good amount to the bottom. Um, do I think that the misplay of not dropping Questing Beast to deal with Chandra to get in that extra damage cost me this game? Uh, there's a chance. Yeah, good. Or, I guess they're just dead, though. That, de that was definitely, that was definitely a misplay by me. My opponent did way too much sideboarding there. Way too much sideboarding. They went through their whole deck and they couldn't kill me. That's that's not good. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess they only had like one reclamation and and zero explosions left in their deck and after sideboarding. Ugh. Okay, three zero. We're gonna we're gonna reset. Try to get some frames back. Try to pick them back up since we've been dropping them. And we're gonna play one more match here. I mean, there's only like four or five cards they didn't actually see. Yeah, they they just sideboard way too much. I mean, like, I don't mind, like, some of the cards they brought in, but they need to keep... Like, they should not take out... Um, like, you obviously keep the four Gross Spiral, four Chemister's Insight, and then they keep the four Reclamation. Like, you should, you should not take out the Reclamation. And then at, at most, go, at most, maybe take out one Explosion, but... Probably not even. Like they should probably just keep those cards in and then sideboard out other stuff. Yeah, I have one flower since we don't have once upon a time anymore, but there's not no, there, there's not just, like, in every deck you just take out, if you you can't play one spot at times, you now play this new card instead. There's not just a single card like that that you just start jamming in your decks instead of once upon a time. It's just kind of a case-by-case -case basis for, like, what deck. You just kind of place it with stuff. All right, let's shuffle this up. Drawing too many lands over here. Thanks, Michael. Ow. Stop trolling. Black with Gilligoose. Darn. Our opponent looks pretty green over there. Yep, pretty green. Um...
So they can bring back the Troll King here still, but at least it, at least it gets rid of it one time. Uh, the, these Gilded Goose just continually making food. I don't know if I have a great answer to that thing, besides just drawing a... Like a... A Conclave Tribunal or something. I mean, obviously... Obviously, we need to draw, like, our, our, our the Great Henge. That'd be good. Uh, we'll take it a cl an acclaimed contender that finds us the Great Henge. Also. Yeah, I... Yeah, I also think this could just... Yeah, it, it doesn't really make much sense that the White, the White Cavalier doesn't exile. I agree. I mean, they get the 3-3 three, three anyway. It, it really should just exile. Like, that's what white does is exile. It doesn't really make much sense for it just um, destroying. I agree. I can block with everything but the Cavalier to kill it. Or I could go like Cavalier Paradise Druid. Oh, come on. I don't think we're supposed to draw nine lands this early. <laughs> yeah, it's a frustrating game. At least my opponent didn't really see very much of my deck. Bring in an exile removal for the creatures and planeswalkers. All right, better hands. Mm. See, once upon a time, would have been free to find the green mana for the Conclave Cavalier. Ah, we got it anyway. Fight that deck. Kind of want to prison realm the paradise druid.
if I'm casting Flourish or not. I mean, OK, OK, OKM's just fine. Like, I, I kind of have to block the OKMs because they deal damage to me, they draw a card. Like, it's just fine. Yeah, it's a, a two mana, basically two mana removal. Tristani is a great draw. We haven't seen any of our legendary artifacts yet. Why do they get a legendary artifact? I haven't gotten one. Really hope they draw land this turn. Really hope they draw land. <clears throat> just please just draw land. Okay, good. Do I play Tulsimer first? Try to risk it again? I mean, I guess so. Okay. Awesome. So basically, I want to play all of these. This is 62, though. YCB is good against these fight stuff. Um, I obviously can't have 62. I'll trim a circle of loyalty on the draw. And I guess the Knight of Autumn? No, Knight of Autumn's good. I, mean, I wouldn't mind playing more Cavaliers, though, also. I guess I take out Questing Beast. Questing Beast just doesn't line up well against Wicked Wolf. <laughs> you can run 62 if you want. I'm not going to stop you. All right, same curve we had last game, but we're on the draw now. I got a shotgun with Temple Guard in this next turn. Uh, unfortunately, same curve they have. I hate seeing turn two Paradise Druid. No. Hate seeing that. I 
All right, try to slow him down. Just a straight up fight? Just two for. Wow. That could not have been a great decision, right? That could not have been a great decision. Uh, yeah, I mean, they have, they have things that make food. Uh, Gilded Goose, Feasting Troll King. I've survived an apocalypse. I will survive you. Mm. I'd get out of the way if I were you. They get to eat two of my creatures, but I got to kill this Vivian. I will trade. Oh no! Wow, what a what a spell. Well, now we don't get to kill Vivian, and they get to eat. Oh, that was a terrible block. I've seen too many species die already. They had to just block the the, the two three threes. I guess. I mean, I would have if they blocked the two three threes. The shifting Ceratops would have died. Though, I guess, but they had to keep Vivian alive, didn't they? Cool. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's a terrible block, but I, I feel like you're supposed to keep Vivian alive. But I guess maybe keeping Shifting Ceratops alive instead. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Crispy. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that staying. Uh, staying here for the third month now. Welcome back. Boom! Selesnia Knights with the 4-0 in the top of Mythic, getting us up to number 35 now. Awesome. This deck's just pretty, pretty fun. We've played some sweet decks today. Yeah, up to 35. We started today at like um, I don't even know what we started today at, like 700 probably, something like that. And then today, you know, we were what 10 and two. Um, yeah, deck is insane. I tell you, yeah, this is this deck was pretty sweet. Uh, Sir Farron kind of did its thing, you know, like it's this is not that good of a card. Um, but I I think it's, you know, like I said, it's this is a card that we sideboard out like every time. Uh, Venerable Knight is another option. I kind of debated between one of the, like one of those. Like Venerable Knight's also just a, a um, you know, one mana knight that you can just play very cheaply to trigger Worthy Knight or you know, double spell with it. Um, and then you know, it has like the whole plus one plus one counter thing. So like that that's another good option. I thought about playing like a couple of Venerable Knights. Um, 
I don't really like any of the other options for just something cheap, for just a cheap knight to play in green and white. Like, nah, nah. So, um, so just, you know, like if you're watching this later, that's, that's another option for you there is Venerable Knight in the Sir Farron slot. The reason why I went with Sir Farron is because we get to drop the Great Henge and then immediately play uh, Sir Farron. I like that. Also, we could have like a turn like where we attack, like like I said kind of at the beginning of the video, where we attack, pump up like a Questing Beast or Conclave Cavalier. Um, maybe that makes the Great Henge even more castable and stuff too. But honestly, maybe just the, the one mana the Venerable Knight costs, it should be in there. Um, no, no, I don't think I'd want to just replace it with Bond of Flourishing. I, I like having the knight, because you you need a knight in play for a claimed contender to trigger. And so I kind of like having that extra knight. Um, and, you know, triggers worthy knight, triggers a claimed contender. You get to draw a card off the Great Henge. It's a knight that counts towards Circle of Loyalty um, and everything like that. Um, we ha So we want to try out Conclave and Prison Realm. I think I was more impressed by Conclave Tribunal than Prison Realm. I didn't like how Prison Realm got Golgari queened. That wasn't cool. And Conclave was free a few times, like with, with us doing Worthy Knight stuff. So I think I liked Conclave Tribunal more. So I think I would just play the two Conclave Tribunals in the main. And, you know, we still have the Prison Realms over there. Um... Yeah, um, and a few more cards against control would be good. I don't know exactly what those cards are, though. But cards that don't cost four mana, you know, because we, we have like a higher curve against control. So cards that cost one, two, or three mana that are good against control. I don't know exactly what those are in Selesnya Colors. But I feel like we could use some in our sideboard instead of all the Devout Decrees and Glass Caskets. Um, and maybe instead of one of the Cavalier of Dawns. So if, if anybody has ideas, and you know if you're watching this on YouTube, if you have ideas for cards that cost one, two, or three mana that are good against control that give you like card advantage and stuff, um, I guess I guess the best the best thing I can think of is Gideon. So we can maybe have cy some cyborg Gideons. Um, yeah, we should probably have some cyborg Gideons. Um, taking out. I don't think we need the third Cavalier of Dawn. So taking that out and then taking out um, either Decree or Glass Casket. Um, I don't know. They're both. I guess a Glass Casket. Um, I mean... Yeah, like Glass Casket comes in against aggro and stuff. Um, so yeah, I talked about earlier. I was I wanted to try out one of Johnny, and we we didn't get to use it, but I wanted to try out one of Johnny against the cat decks that try to just drain us out um, with just being able to play this as something that that gains you life every single turn. You know, three life a turn, especially if we get a great engine play. Also, it's five life a turn that make us a pretty hard to drain out. I am certainly not convinced of it. I can definitely see taking it out. I just wanted to try it. Um, we never got to we never got to play against aggro, so we never got to do anything with it. But I wanted to give it a try. Um, if we take this out, I would replace this with Shifting Ceratops. Shifting Ceratops seems pretty important in, in the format, uh, in the sideboard. So if if it turns out a Johnny isn't really worth it, then probably just play a fourth Shifting Ceratops instead. If you if you really like. Uh, if you're if you really like shifting ceratops and you want another one, that's a slot that you could have. Um, I thought about playing the other Ajani, but I think I think the green white Ajani is better at that because um, the other Ajani, if you so yeah, I thought about playing this one. If you don't have other things in play though, you're you're not really gaining any life. You're just gaining like one life if you just play this on its own. But then again, if you do play this on its own, you can just play a pride mate. You know, you can just play it and get get a two two as well. So, I, so that's the other thing. So I'm not. 
So I kind of, I was leaning towards this because it's just three life every turn. And then of course your creatures have vigilance, which helps you win races with, with, you know, your creatures having vigilance. Like that's, that's, a, that's not bad. And then that minus two, if you do have stuff out, make your stuff bigger, which is really, which is usually good against aggro decks, uh, making your things bigger. So I, I lean towards this green, this Ajani over this one. Um, but you know, I could, I could hear cases for, for this too. So it's just kind of. Magic situational, you know. Um, yeah, we would never play Hushbringer in this deck because we're we're trying to play the Great Henge. We never want Hushbringer in our acclaimed contender, Great Henge, Knight of Autumn <clears throat> deck, Tristani, Tulsimer, Cavalier of Dawn. Yeah, we don't want Hushbringer at all. I liked the flower. I liked the flower. I could see taking out the Surf Aaron for a second flower. If, if you do want to take out the Surf Aaron, I could see take, playing a second flower to just help you hit land drops. Um, I could see that. And if you do that, then you could probably take out a Plains for a second castle also. Um... Besides that, it, it did kind of feel like I was I had a little bit less white sources. I don't know, maybe maybe one of the forests should be a plains. You know, so we, we basically have seven plains, nine forests. Um maybe we should have another forest be a plains. Because once we have the Great Henge in play, then you know we get a lot more green mana also. But even some of these things cost a lot of white, you know, Cavalier costs a lot of white. But we need green early for this. This thing costs a lot of green. Um, no, we don't really need a splash for, for Garrick. We don't really need more top end stuff. We got a lot of top end stuff already. Yeah, I think, I think we're already going to be pretty good against Cat Oven with the Knight of Autumn's. Like, Knight of Autumn's awesome. And then we got a, a good clock with Questing Beast Cavalier, that kind of stuff. We can go wide. I think we're pretty good in the Cat Oven matchup, which is why I was excited to play this. Uh, unbreakable formation in the sideboard against control sweepers. I don't love it. It doesn't it doesn't pan out very well. Like that that situation doesn't happen. I usually, just have unbreakable formation, and then they just thought razor like one of my like one of my threats, and then you know like kill another one, and then I'm just sitting with lands and unbreakable formation. I, I don't like the a card that. You know, you have to, like, already have, like, had a bunch of lands and then also get a bunch of creatures in play and then uh, also be able to have, you know, so you, you have all that. So, you know, you're not not stumbling whatsoever or their interaction isn't really dealing with you whatsoever. And then you, you have to still be able to just be able to hold up three mana and uh, then, you know, then they have a wrath and then you cast it. It's just... It's just so much. I, I just don't want it. Um, correct. The patch is on Thursday for historic, and that's why we're gonna be we're gonna be playing historic decks on Thursday. And yes, I, I will be brewing a bunch of historic decks for that, and that'll be a, that'll be a lot of fun. All right, but there we go. That's Celestia Knights. Um, yeah, this deck was awesome. You know, four zero there uh, up in the top of Mythic. Um, just some underrated stuff here. Just worth, you know, Knight of Autumn, very good in this format. And I think Worthy Knight and Acclaimed Contender, especially Acclaimed Contenders, is really underrated. This card is really, really good. I like that card a lot. And of course, the Great Henge was just absolutely amazing for us. All right. So if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you know, hit that like button over there. Leave those comments. I was talking about, uh, you know, let me know what you think of the deck and like those slots that we were discuss discussing afterwards um, and everything. And of course, let me know what you're playing for this uh, this new format, this new standard format, and all that kind of stuff. But thank you so much for watching some Selesnia Nights, and I'll see you for the next video.